When I was a student and I first read the death of Ivan Illich, you know, I began reading and the whole first section is first about Ivan Illich's friends and then uh, really about this character, Pyotr Ivanovich. And so my first thought reading it, I remember as a student, I didn't think Ivan Illich was going to be a character in it. I mean, when we first see him, he's already a corpse. So I assumed he would already be dead. Uh, and that wasn't about him. It was about the effects of his death and the lives of his friends and other people. But by the end of the first section, it seems clear that it hasn't, at least at the first glance, it doesn't appear to have affected them uh, at all. And then as we get into the story about Ivan Illich himself, we begin with the sort of broadest sense of his life. Very broad. The, you know, we have whole sections which are just about his life where he doesn't appear in any meaningful way to be dying. And as the story goes on, it narrows down uh, into the things that, that were happening at the end of his life, his internal uh, life, his internal thoughts, and him grappling with the idea of his death. So I remember as a student looking at that and thinking like, uh, what was that whole first section about? Now, at that time, I just kind of dismissed that. I thought, well, I, I don't know, maybe just some introductory material. But in fact, I think the first section is what the entire story is about. When we look at the death of Ivan Illich, you know, we see his friends uh, here and we see that they're not present for his death in the same way. And they're just sort of reading the news. And when we see his life, we see much the same thing. When we see Pyotr Ivanovich and he, he seems to be going through the motions of what you should be doing uh, in life. And much of what we see going on in Ivan Illich's life is him going through the motions of what he, of, of how he sees uh, his life. In fact, the very name Pyotr Ivanovich, you know, he has Ivan as part of his name, right? This idea, uh, of course, it's a common name, uh, but he could have chosen any name for this character, uh, but instead he chooses it to also connect it to him in this, in a way in which uh, Pyotr Ivanovich is also another version of Ivan Illich. And so as we look at this first section, I think what we see are characters who are just like Ivan Illich. And we begin to see the way that they move through the world, the way they even respond to the death of their friend. Uh, and I've heard, uh, I've, I've had students say like, well, they're so-called friend, but clearly they're not friends with him because they would have responded differently. They would have felt more, but I don't know within the realm of how they live their lives. He is their friend. It's just, this would be their version of friendship. In the way they live their lives, this is their version of life and the way that life should be lived. And of course, by the time we get to the end of the death of Ivan Illich, he himself is grappling with the sense that he hasn't been living his life the way that it should be lived. Uh, but he's not sure how he should have lived the life. And as he goes through the dying process, he comes to grips with this. And so now when I return to uh, the death of Ivan Illich, I'm actually less interested in the last part, the last, you know, uh, 80% than I am in the first 20% in reading the sorts of things that the characters feel the sorts of things uh, that they say. Um, you know, they are, as we see in the beginning here, uh, what are they doing when they're reading the, 
you know, when, when they're reading the paper. Well, they're there, uh, you know, taking a break uh, during this hearing at the court, right? So they're all at work. Um, and immediately, as soon as he is gone, everyone starts to, in their minds, jockey, what is my new position in the world? Well, how does this section end? This section ends with card games and essentially how they are playing the game that they're playing. And there's a sense in which they treat themselves like he's almost been discarded in the way that one would would discard something. We have a, a, a moment here uh, where, you know, uh, Piotr Ivanovich uh, is thinking about this and thinking about what's happened when he's gone uh, to, to, to talk to her and trying to, to think about, you know, what this means for him. Um, and in here we see that he himself f- seems to feel like, um, I'm not sure whether th- this involves me. Right. Uh, so we see that he, it says, um, when, uh, when Piotr Ivanovich gets there, he says, this gave Pyotr Ivanovich an unpleasant feeling. And so he hurriedly crossed himself once more and moved on too hurriedly, he thought, and not in accordance with propriety and went to the door. And so he crosses himself because he feels uncomfortable not thinking about the religious ramifications of that, not thinking about how, uh, you know, he's always, the whole time he's trying to figure out how should I cross myself, that, you know, not thinking about being pious, but rather thinking about the proper, um, you know, the proper social uh, means that we have here. And we have in here, you know, him looking at this and thinking about how he himself will someday be dead, but he quickly just sort of, you know, um, releases that idea. We have later on three days of terrible suffering and death. That can happen to me too. Now, any minute, he thought. Okay, a moment of self-awareness. And for a moment, he became frightened. But right away, he didn't know how there came to his aid the ordinary thought that this this had happened to Ivan Illich and not to him. And this ought not and could not happen to him. And in thinking like this, he was given in to gloomy thoughts, which one shouldn't, uh, as had been clear from Schwartz's face. Uh, and having reached this conclusion, Pyotr Ivanovich was reassured and started to ask with particular interest the death uh, uh, about the details of Ivan Illich's end, as if death were an adventure pe- peculiar to Ivan Illich, but absolutely not to himself. And there's a sense in which he's disconnected from this idea that it could happen to him. And what we see with Ivan Illich himself is the sense that his life is disconnected from his death. Uh, that he, the problem, the screaming he has is not just a screaming of pain, but a sense that he has never lived a life. Uh, And he's trying to, in his last moments, is trying to figure out what it means to live a life. And I don't know that, uh, some will make arguments that it does, but I don't know that Tolstoy actually makes an argument for how one should live life. But I do think here in the first section, he does clearly suggest a way that we shouldn't live life, and that is living life only with accordance to forms, only with accordance to social norms, without thinking about what those things will mean on a deeper level.